Greetings from Long Island, where every highway is a sunrise. It's time for Dave's Gone By, an hour of comedy, talk, and music brought to you by Total Theater, with your host, Dave Lefkowitz. You've never heard anything like it, so sit back, relax, squeal if you must. Here's the host of Dave's Gone By, Dave! Tropical hot dog night! Well, there goes the neighborhood. Welcome, everybody, on this July 1st, 2007, to the 228th episode of Dave's Gong By. Absolutely gorgeous weekend it has been. Apparently going to get warmer again as the week goes on, but it was uh, kind of great to get through that heat wave and have such a, a lovely weekend, and I hope you all did. I'm Dave Lefkowitz, by the way, host of this program, which has been on the air since October of 2002. That makes this our 228th episode, this one called Sobe Story. Why? Because we're very excited, we're very happy, we're going to have the return of Ms. Jill Sobule on the program. Jill, uh, well, those who know the show will hopefully remember her from about a year and a half ago when she talked to the one and only Rabbi Saul Solomon. Jill is best known, I guess, to the world at large for doing the song I Kissed a Girl, pretty famous for that. What most of those folks at large don't realize is that she's written a dozen songs just as good and she's really wonderfully talented so we had to have her back on and of course Rabbi Saul has been dying to have her back on for part two as well so yes the rabbi will be here and Jill will be back on this episode of Dave's Gone By but that's not all we've got more to do tonight than that because we also have Inside Broadway that's where we talk about all the things that are either happening right now on and off Broadway, as well as what's coming up in the season ahead. Plus, I will be reviewing the latest play by Neil Labute. Now, uh, he's gotten real famous real quick, mostly for writing these plays and writing and directing these movies about kind of nasty people doing nasty things. And, well, he's kind of done that again with a new show that's playing at the Manetta Lane Theater called, um, excuse me, not the Manetta Lane, pardon me, the, the Lucille Lortel Theater off-Broadway. The show is called In a Dark, Dark House, and I will let you know if it's worth paying your green, green money to see. So that's on Inside Broadway. Also, got to get a little bit dark and sad because we'll be saying goodbye to a theater and film critic of some note. This past week, we lost Joel Siegel, who is, of course, the uh, movie reviewer for ABC's Good Morning America for all those years. And he did a bunch of other stuff that we'll talk about as well. Kind of sad to say goodbye to him. And hopefully, towards the second half of the show, we're going to have my good friend and often co-host Jeff Goodman is going to pop by. If you remember last week, I talked about uh, my trip to Las Vegas with the American Theatre Critics Association. Well, Jeff was on the same trip. He stayed a couple of days extra, and he had some interesting adventures over there that I'm sure he's going to want to talk about and tell us all about. So, lots of stuff to do on this episode of Dave's Gone By, which is brought to you by MortgagesRock.com, the place to go not only if you want to get a mortgage or you need a loan for whatever purpose, but... If you want to get your friends and family and neighbors and co-workers loans for the things they want to do, fix up their houses, send a kid to college, MortgagesRock.com teaches you how, and the more you learn, the more paperwork you do, because that's what it really is, paperwork, well, the more commission you can earn. So just go to MortgagesRock.com and it will tell you everything you need to know. Also, this program is brought to you by Hewlett Minuteman Press, the copy kings of Broadway in Hewlett, Long Island. They're right next to that new Lowman's shoe store and across the street from the old Lowman's clothing store, 1315 Broadway in Hewlett, Hewlett Minuteman Press, with 10% off for Dave's Gone By listeners. We're also brought to you by Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine, the Bible of Broadway, and they bring us the Inside Broadway segment that we do pretty much every week. And... Uh, 
we have a, a really cool special. Normally, we give uh, 10% off to Dave's Gone By listeners for subscriptions to Performing Arts Insider. But if you go to my website, davesgoneby.org, it'll show you, show you the big special that they're having. It's 21 issues a year for this rather expensive journal, but really, really good price. It's like under $200 for the full year if your Dave's Gone By listener. I know that sounds like a lot of money for a subscription, but this is a pretty deep, intensive Broadway, off-Broadway journal, and it's a, a pretty good price considering what the regular cost is. Anyway, go to davesgoneby.org for all that information. And finally, as I mentioned uh, before, Jeff Goodman. He is the owner and operator of Fancy Schmancy Balloons. They are there to do the balloons and the centerpieces for all your big occasions, for our mitzvahs, christenings, weddings, office parties, maybe your 4th of July party. You can plan it, call Jeff, he'll take care of it, and he, he also takes care of your other party planning needs. So if you need a DJ or the flowers, he's connected with that too, but what he does are the balloons and centerpieces, and he does them really beautifully. Fancy Schmancy Balloons, 516-797-3229. The number again, 516-797-3229. Make a note of it. So, oh, before I get to the first commercial and then we start getting to the wonderful Jill Sobuel and the semi-wonderful Rabbi Saul Solomon, I um, spent a day and a half in Philadelphia this week for uh, for various reasons. It was kind of neat and you know, still it's a pretty great city and a great city for foodies and a wonderful walking city especially, as I said, in the great weather that we've had. And the one impression that I came away with more than anything else, it wasn't about the buildings or the architecture or the food or the people, ha happened to be that we were staying in a bed and breakfast. And very nice place, with, you know, like a fourth floor walk up, and, and really one of these old buildings that you can imagine one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence living in all those years ago, and now they've turned it into a B&B. And at home, I have really lousy cable. And that's partly my responsibility there. I'm paying for a very low tier. So I only get about 23 channels of whatever it is, the 300 that Cablevision Optimum supposedly gives now. We just don't feel necessarily that it's worth it for the amount of television that we watch. Whatever. So I'm not used to the kinds of channel choice that certain cable companies now offer. So we're flipping through, and it's always a, a kind of this cool thing when we go to hotels or B&Bs, and they have more channels to see what we're missing. To, it, it, it was always a thrill for me. Like, even growing up as a kid, back when there were only five channels on the television, ABC, CBS, NBC, public television, and, and like Channel 11, and some of the UN, Chef Spanish, and Cuban channels. So you go to another state. We go to Philadelphia, or we go to... to you know, Connecticut, something like that. You'd put on the TV, and there would still be only a couple of channels, but they'd be different ones, and the news would be different. The anchors, the children's shows would be local and different, and that was always cool. So that still held over to me today, when I'll go and see a lot of certainly the same tier cable channels, and then all these new channels that came out of nowhere because they're subsidiaries, like NBC will own X amount of news channels, and these subsidiaries and affiliates. And ESPN is apparently like mushrooming these sports channels. So half the channels on there are these different things of ESPN. There's baseball, there's like yachting. And I found watching on, I think it was a Friday morning, there's a channel, not a show, not a program, but there's an ESPN channel apparently called Classic Bowling. Now, this is an oxymoron right from the title. The idea that there can be classic bowling. And, and this, it just boggles my mind that this exists in 2007. And they were showing this bowling match from only about six years ago. And it was a pretty exciting match. One guy was kept throwing strikes and the other guy kept getting spares. And yet they caught up to each other and nearly came to some kind of bowling shootout. But I figure, I don't know. There, there are people who are saying that Armageddon is just a couple of years away. And if, if there is now a cable television channel station 
called Classic Bowling. I think we're pretty damn close. Anyway, we are going to be bowling for Sobules in just a moment or two on Dave's Gone By. So for gosh sakes, you do not want to miss this program tonight. Don't go away. I love internet radio. You can surf stations and music for free and listen anytime on your computer. And I love Live365.com for playing vintage episodes of Dave's Gone By Saturday nights at 11. And I love the comedy channel they're on, DFSX Radio. But those letters, DFSX, who can remember that? Good thing you don't have to. Just go to davesgoneby.org and click the link, Saturday nights at 11. Spread the radio love. I'm so happy when you're here And I'm not a happy girl Like a miracle occurs I'm happy when you're near And all my angels appear And the demons bring my ear And I want to be in the kitchen With two people from the I am so happy. I am so excited. This is what I've been waiting for for a year and a half. The return of one of the most lovely and sweet and talented singer-songwriters in the whole Oilem. Her name is Jill Sobule. She was on Dave's Gone By a while back. I talked to her. We had a wonderful time and I want to catch up with all the things that she's doing. Hello, Jill. How are you? Hello, Rabbi. Oh, it's so good to hear you. You And you have the cutest voice. That I have oh. ever heard. You, yours and Moses. <laughs> and yours. Oh, well, uh, mine is more gravelly. I'm like uh, Tom Waits skipped in borscht. But you, oh, what a sweet, say something, say anything. Um, you gotta live a little, give a little. Doi doi. Doi 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 That's the story oi, of Hashem. How are you? Now, now uh, I don't want to bring up something bad. But I was looking at your blog and the thing, and it said that you were recently in for surgery. I had a little surgery, and Oy. I've been recovering, and um, I've been actually convalescing. is not so bad. Well, this is, you, you have to rest up. you got to give the body a chance to... Re- re- everything all right? Was it uh, a girl thing? Was it tubing or uh, something else? What was yeah, it? That's a minor girl thing, but, but they had to, I had to go under, and uh, I, got the, I got the morphine pump, and... Um, it that wasn't happened? that bad of a time. I've been catching up with my reading, and and and, and I, I recently bought a turntable, which I hadn't had forever. So before I uh, went under, I bought a bunch of records. Rec- oh, yeah, what, what kind of records? What albums did you get? Well, okay, let's see here. 
Was it uh, Moshe Kusevitsky? Bobby Gentry. Hmm? Is that uh, Billy Joe McAllister? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? I got an old Joni Mitchell here. I have a, 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 a soundtrack to hair. Don't laugh. Soundtrack. That's a wonderful album. I love that music. The new guitar, yeah, right? It's a, but the, but the music is great. I don't like the pot smoking. I think it's bad for you, but all right. What else? What else? What's in your record collection? So, so, so I got an X. Remember the band X? X. X. A, a hard day's night. Them I heard of. Those people I know. Those those people were good. They had the long hair, except no payas. I I, I remember them. And I got a, a, a new, uh, I mean, a, a newer artist, Sissy John Stevens. I, I like his album, Illinois, and I bought the, the, the vinyl of it. Is he, what is he doing? The Sissy John Stevens, he's doing one for every state of the union now? Is that the deal? Yeah, but so far I've just heard, uh, I just, I think there's just Illinois. I, I, I mean, I really don't want to hear Michigan. There's nothing he can sing about Michigan that would be of any interest to me. <laughs> Florida, all right. Yes, maybe Florida, California, Hawaii, oh, of course. Not Michigan, not South Dakota. You can't do an album on South Dakota, I'm sorry. Watch, tomorrow you'll go write a song about South Dakota. I'll bet. It's the Badlands, are they in South Dakota? Oh, are they? Oh, well, Bruce Springsteen got there first. One of them. But it's great because the second, and, and I put down the, vi uh, the needle for the first time in ages. You, you just feel that sense of childhood being in your old bedroom. It's fantastic. Oh, that's... And, of course, I'm talking because I was on painkillers, so that <laughs> helped, too. Oh, isn't, isn't that wonderful? Painkillers killers and Manischewitz. What a combination. <laughs> the sweet and the bitter. Oh, I love it. Speaking of bitter sweet, one of the people that, um, that Dave has had on his radio program very recently is uh, Crystal Zivon, the former widow ex-wife thing. Oh, yeah, of yeah. The late How Warren. Is, I've been meaning to get the book, but I'm, I'm afraid. Oh, you don't want to turn the pages of this book. Dave was reading this to me because my eyesight's bad, so I had him read me some good night stories. And oi, 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 what a, what a jerk. What a bad, bad person he was when he was on the booze. And not so nice when he wasn't on the booze either. He was beating the crap out of her. Yeah, but I, I don't. I, you know what? I'm prejudiced because I knew, I knew him when the hardest thing he was doing was he was addicted to um, Mountain Dews. And he was... So nice and sweet to me, so that's all that matters to me. It's <laughs> true. Like, you know, when Goebbels was nice to me. That's <laughs> true. But the, the, let me ask you, hit on you? Did, was there anything there? Because he was hitting on, I mean, he was stopping everything that moved. I think I came a little too late. I remember him saying to me, but because it was really interesting. We had, uh, we toured in a rock bus, just him and I and the road manager. And I remember now there was a couple times when he'd have the soft porn, like the Playboy Channel in the back lounge, and he'd forget in the back lounge of the bus, and he'd forget to put the blinds down. So people who were coming to the show would come by, and they could see the they could see the TV going on. <laughs> but really. that was part of his image. I mean, the, the funny thing, thing in the book, the son says when they after he died and they were clearing out his stuff, they found his porn collection of the, the video cassettes and everything, and they figured, hey, what are we going to do? It turned out to be him. Because he was videotaping himself with some of his girlfriends. He was a nut. He was a crazy guy. Yeah, well, I had some lovely times, but I will say that, uh, you know, that, that there was nothing going on between us. But when he um, got sick, and, and it was really it was really terrible, and, and um, I, I didn't go see him towards the end, and, but he would email me, and his emails got a little bit racy. Oh, and kind of flirting in that way, and I'm like, what do I do? This is a dying man. I'm just going to go with it. Oh, my goodness. So I have, among that collection, I have some letters. Hmm. Well, that, there's volume two. But I didn't, <laughs> no, I don't think they were, they, 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 they weren't so bad, but I had my own, uh, my own worn pornography co collection. <laughs> Did he make you howl like a werewolf? No, I don't, I don't think so. No, 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 they were, they were more tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> which tongue, which cheek? No, I no, don't. No, as, as I was saying that, I knew I You knew you shouldn't have gone there. No, no, no. So, besides your surgery, besides the, the hospital, I mean, I'm, I hope you're feeling better. What oh. else has been new since you were last talking to me on this radio program? Oh, I can't even, I don't even know where to begin working on, working on some, uh, why am I talking like you? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're Jewish too, that's why. Did you know Warren Sebon was Jewish? <laughs> 
half was, Jewish and half Mormon. Oh, you knew. You know all this stuff. You know yeah, why? because yeah, we talked about we were both in the book of Jews who rock. Jews who rock. I'm not in that book. I don't know why. I don't know, but... I'm in the book of Jews who complain. I'm on page two. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an epic. <laughs> so, so, I'm sorry, you were saying, so you're in California. What the hell are you doing out there? Yeah, well, I kind of moved out here for a little bit because I was doing music for a show for Nickelodeon called Unfabulous. Emma Roberts' show, she's, she's a Nancy Drew now, but that's about over. But I'm just kind of, uh, I'm kind of bi-coastal. This is, uh, that's good. You, you're by, you buy everything, quite honestly. <laughs> and you knew I was going to say that, too. I know. Have you been in an earthquake so yet? Predict you're predictable. Me? Predictable? <laughs> Oi. I get, well, I get, I'm sort of like the Torah. You read me from beginning to end, and I go over and over again every year. It's the same thing. It's the same five books of me, pretty much. But uh, have you had a mudslide? Have you, have you uh, been taken to a relocation camp, or is California okay? It's okay. I, it's all right. As long as I can leave a lot, I'm fine. This is good. Are you still scrabbling? You know, I had to give that up a little bit. It was taken up. The scrambling was taken up a little time, I must say. So uh, I, I have been spending more time, like, working. <laughs> working is good. <laughs> working is good. I've been Work. writing a lot. I, I'm, I'm just about to record another record. A Muzzle. Month. I'm going to work on a... Uh, um, uh, you're still working on a couple of uh, musicals, and what else? I've got my fingers in everything, and don't go there. Uh, are you are too fast for me, Jill Sobule. <laughs> That's a shame. See, I, I was ahead of the curve with you the, the last time. Now you're you're rounding the curve and biting me in the tuchus the other way. Uh, I've got to get my groove on here. Huh? You're, you're in New York, aren't you? This is correct. You know, I am going to be playing Joe's Pub the 7th and 8th. Well, that's why we're talking here. That's, that's... I know, and it's going to be a swell show, and this is what I think I'm going to do with that show, is I'm going to experiment with I'm going to record this show, and I think it's just going to be a solo show. And I'm going to have a little device where I can give out to people, and then later that day, they can late, later that week, they can upload the show. Hmm, that, this is, uh, so you're trying to get very bloggy with your website and to do all that kind of, they, I mean, the whole digital revolution is just continuing to go on and on. Um, is that, um, where do you see the music business going with all that? Well, the one thing I'm happy about is I remember after being dropped from three labels and, and having the, these music industry, you know, scuzzy people uh, dropping me and then going for something cheaper. Cheap. Well, uh, is is that now they're losing their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> Except they get severance pays. We never got those. But there's something I'm n I'm not upset about the industry. At least that aspect of it crumbling. Well, there's this whole thing I read in the the Rolling Stone magazine where the all the record companies are slashing people and they're merging and they're, they're going underground. I mean, it's just it's, the whole thing is is changing now. They don't know what to do. This is true. They don't know what to do. So so. I'm I'm uh, I'm going to be at the forefront of what's new. I don't know what that is yet, but but I I'm I'm going to try to record all my cell phones. And uh, it looks like uh, well, I, there's things in the pipeline, like doing a, a maybe something with Yahoo, a, a blog site, and and for music and politics. Ooh, very interesting. Well, politics is going to change in, in a year or two anyway. Who knows what it will be then? So, no, but it's going to be really uh, interesting and fun, and hopefully I'll get uh, a lot on the blog site a lot of other artists and, and poets and who want to contribute. And Jews. Don't forget Jews. That's very important. It, well, it's just going to be music, uh, politics, and Jews. <laughs> That's all you really need in this life, <laughs> at least if you're me. All right, last question, because uh, unfortunately we do have to move on. But uh, last time I asked you, you were, you were in sort of old babushka mode. You were kind of uh, staying to yourself a little bit, not really out there uh, meeting people. Are you meeting people? Are you dating? Are you, uh, you know, cohabitating, marrying, that kind of thing? I'm out, I'm out there. I'm, 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 I'm just, uh, you know, I just had my surgery. Give me some oh. time. Well, they can't, well, they can't go below the waist, but uh, you getting any action above? <laughs> Second base. Oh, good for uh, male or female. You know I love to hear this stuff. <laughs> Go away. I'm like Warren Zevon with a microphone. That's what I am. <laughs> I'm just listening to my old Warren Zevon tape. So anyway, Jill, so you're going to be at 
Joe's Pub yes. on July 7th and July 8th. Everybody go out and see her. She's wonderful. She's adorable. She's great. Jill, give us some, some wonderful last words to, to think of you. You gotta live a little. Sing. Give a little. A little. Hey, that's the story of Jews. There you go. Jill, <laughs> God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful show, and we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye, Rabbi. Shalom. I slipped the disc. That is, I slipped the disc into my CD player, and it's a Dave's Gone By CD. That's right. We have literally a couple of hundred Dave's Gone By episodes on compact disc for you to purchase and listen to any time you want. They make a great gift. They're fun. They're funny. Well, at least I think so. Find out more at my website, davesgoneby.org, and start listening to Dave and slip in your discs. Moby Dick. Ulysses, War and Peace, The Bible. 
big freaking deal. If you want to read a real book, a funny book, try Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World, a collection of comedies by Dave Lefkowitz, me, the host of Dave's Gone By. Each play is stage-tested and relatively safe for public consumption. Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World, available from Holbo Books on the Dave's Gone By website. It's the great American something. Inside Broadway, brought to you by Total Theater's Performing Arts Insider, your everything theater guide. Yes, Inside Broadway on this July 1st, 2007. Welcome, everybody. And also, welcome to my good friend Jeff Goodman, who's going to take part in the rest of the show. Jeff, how are you? I'm tired of driving down coned roads. That's what I'm tired of. What's going on in, in Long Island? Jane? I don't know. It's like land of cones. The coneheads have invaded. <laughs> and especially right outside where uh, the radio studio is. They're just tearing up everything. And I think they've done the work, but they left the cones, which is the strangest part. I think the cones are multiplying on their own. That, that could be. <laughs> they're, they're cone cloning, which is, I, I guess, the word for it. I don't even know what that Clo -coning? means. Clo cloning? Clo cloning? Clo say that 15 times fast, but not now, because we don't have time, okay. because we've got to get to Inside Broadway and Broadway News, first of all. Also in this segment, I'll be reviewing In a Dark, Dark House at the uh, Lucia Lord. Of course theater. you're going to review In a Dark, Dark House. It has to be dark in the theater. Bum, bum. Nicely put. Okay, guess what big Broadway musical is now fully cast? Uh, Young Frankenstein? Young Frankenstein it is, and I guess you know that Cloris Leachman is not going to be in it. She rallied, she, she tried to get the role of Frau Blücher, <laughs> which she played in the Mel Brooks movie, but she's 81 or 82 years old, and Mel just said, you got to do eight shows a week, and, uh, and, and you know who he got instead. And we'd rather have Karen from Will and Grace. Karen from Willem... No, 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 no. Oh, what role is Me she Megan playing? Mullally is in the... Oh, she's, uh, that's right. She's playing the, the girlfriend. Right. She plays the, the um, Dr. Falk. I forgot who's playing. We got Andrea Martin. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. that's perfect. So I can't really be so sad that Cloris Leachman didn't get the part because Andrea Martin is perfect, perfect. so great. And Roger Bart is going to be Frankenstein and Sutton Foster is going to be Inga and uh, Schuller Hensley is going to play the monster. So... Should be it's a good cast. If nothing oh, yeah. else, it's a good cast. There are people complaining that it's going into the Hilton Theater now, which is a barn. So we'll see. They'll fill it, but whether it's going to lose something in such a big house, I don't know. Anyway, speaking of Schuler Hensley, turns out the show that he, I think he's still in it. Uh, yeah. It's going to be closing on July Closed. 8th. Oh, no, July 8th? I thought it was July 1st. No. Which July show? 8th. Tarzan. Tarzan, after 486 performances. That's really surprising. It's a Disney flop. Yeah. It's the, this is the biggest Disney flop, because Aida was, ran over a year. Well, this ran over, if you did 486 performances, this ran over a year also. Oh, that's it opened right. May 10th, but with the Disney thing, the operating expenses are so high, and it was probably a 10 or $12 million musical, so they're just not going to recoup their money and they're going to close it, Nick. They, they didn't put a nice face on it. They didn't say, hey, look, it ran a year. In the old days, running a year was a huge hit. Yeah. yeah. No, Thomas Schumacher, who runs Disney, just said, you no, know, we, we're, we're very disappointed that it's closing this early, but so and so and so forth. Which leaves a nice theater open now. Uh-huh. A nice, so any thoughts on what might be coming in there? Do you know? I have no idea, but they're going to be fighting for it because that's a great theater. Every the Richard theater Rogers. That, yeah, every theater that comes available now. They yeah, but the Richard Rogers is right snack in the middle of Broadway. It's on, you know, it's the 47th and Broadway. Right next to the TKTS booth now, the temporary TKTS booth. Who wouldn't want to be there? Good good point. I'm, I'm sure within three weeks we'll, we'll hear what's going in. Maybe three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 because this week nothing's going to happen. Everybody's going to be away for July 4th. Maybe the Wiz will come into that. Hey, you know, the Wiz out in California. That might. Uh, I kind of died, though, at the lawyer. Hmm. Oh, well. It's just like, I don't know. They just didn't, didn't seem to give it a post-life. Well, speaking of post-life, here's someone who died a few years ago, but they're being resurrected, at least in memory and artistic form, opening this week at the New York Public Library and running through September 22nd. They're doing an exhibition dedicated to Molly Pecan, the Yiddish 
actress and, and film star. Really? Yeah. It's called Molly Pecan, Yiddish star, American star. They've got 200 photos, programs, posters, sheet music, uh, radio scripts, costumes, all that stuff. You can find out. Ooh, you okay, Jeff? Dying here. It's okay. Okay. Well, well, Don't worry about me. I'll just turn down your mic when you're calling. There you go. Uh, so if you want to see the Molly Pecan stuff, NYPL. Dot org is the uh, place for more information. MYPL dot org. Yeah, you can find out about the radio series Nancy from Delancey. And did you know, you know, actually I didn't even realize this. I know her from Yiddle Mitha Fiddle is her most famous film. But she was Yen to the Matchmaker in the Topol oh, Fiddler yeah. on the Roof. Oh, yeah. I had completely forgotten about that. I had that. seen her on Broadway in a really horrible uh, show. Do you remember what it was? Um... It'll come to me later. I, I, I remember seeing her, and, and it was like in a really bad comedy. It's probably the last thing she did on Broadway. Well, the thing is, they used to have a Jewish comedy or two every season. It was a, specifically, it was a Molly Pecan thing, or a Manasha Skolnick. I think Skolnick. it's I think it was some people. Was, I'm, think, I'm confusing with some of my best friends, the Ted Knight comedy. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on, speaking of things that aren't um, sticking around with well, the show is sticking around. Grey Gardens, one of the hits, well, com uh, critical hits. I don't think it's a commercial hit yet, but uh, Grey Gardens, the Broadway show, is going to lose one of its lead no. actresses on July 29th, Mary Louise Wilson. Really? Yeah. After winning the Tony. Exactly. She won the Best Supporting Actress in a Musical Tony. Maybe she's going to do the tour. Oh, I wonder. I wonder. Or maybe she has something else to do, or maybe it's a, a rather grueling... Well, no, she's in bed the whole second act. <laughs> and she's not in the first, the first act. act. It's not that uh, Stick around, Mary Louise. But, of course, Ebersole is like Christina the Christina. show. So if she weren't staying, I think they'd probably close the thing. So they're probably paying her oodles to stick around. I think, no, I think they'll probably groom someone to uh, take her place. Really? I, I think so. I think, you know, you have to. Because why would you close the show just because of a person leaving? Who could they get? Bernadette? You never know. Well, anyway, you have until July 29th to see Mary Louise Wilson in Grey Gardens, and she's terrific. She's and I think really it'll also boost the box office, the fact that she's leaving. I think oh, it will come between to... between now yeah. and the 29th. Yeah. That could be. Now, the big Broadway news as far as this coming season, whether mm -hmm. it's going to be great or whether it's going to be a disaster, I don't know. I don't know this. Do you know who's going to be making his Broadway directing debut? Not only his Broadway directing debut, but his theatrical directing debut. And he's going to do it on Broadway. I don't know. Spike Lee. Really? The filmmaker of X and Do the Right Thing and Mo Betta Blues. Spike wants to make his, his directing debut in big style and what's on he Broadway. Doing? Stalag 17. Really? Yep. Best known as being that Billy Wilder film that William yeah. Holden won the Oscar for. It's the film that inspired Hogan's Heroes, right. of all things. Well, it's a play, and Spike Lee wants to direct it. Have they gotten a the theater yet? Um, or is that going to fill the Richard Rogers? Well, it's, it's set for spring 2008, so either they're not sure about the theater or someone's yeah. going to close and they haven't announced it yet. Solid 17 was actually written by two POWs, one of whom is still alive, and really? is apparently very excited about Spike taking that project on. Is he going to make it all black? Or? No, no, no. See, that's such a, a thing, but... Well, I had a run-in with Spike Lee. When? What? Where? What? Yeah. I was I was decorating a party for um Oh who are the tap dancing brothers? He's now passed away. The, no not, Oh oh my god, no, the Nicholas brothers? No, 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 no. Oh. Hines? Yeah, Gregory Hines. Yeah. And I was doing it and it was I guess a a, a, a very um African American venue, shall we say. Okay, fine. And which I was the it only It was a crack then. <laughs> no, no, no. It was the Tar Art Studios. I'll never forget that. Yeah. And it was okay. very nice, and people were very nice to me, and people were coming and going, and all of a sudden Spike Lee came in, and I'm like, all ready to say hello to him, and he goes, who's the white boy doing balloons? Oh. And I went, oh. Did he say that to you, or near you, to someone he, else? He said to someone else, near near enough that I heard it. And you were supposed to sort of hear well, it? No, no, I don't, oh, I hope not, I hope oh. not, but it just seemed that... Were you were the only white face there? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Man, so you're clearly out of his way, oh, yeah. Well, he didn't really want to shake his hand after that. He yeah. was like, oh, you didn't do the right thing, Spike. <laughs> he should have popped a balloon near his ear. Like, oops. No, I didn't. I, I just was surprised. I, I was very surprised because I really thought that he, of all people, wouldn't be like that. Well, yeah, especially concerning the, the humanity, quote-unquote, that he, sh he showed and do the right thing. Good thing he didn't know you were Jew. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> or right? Mopega Blues, you know, or, or the, his portrayal. And, uh, anyway, anyway, moving on. Some bad news and some good news, believe it or not, about an outgoing show. In comes, you know, or I should say bad news, good news, out goes company. You yeah. know, that, that company closed. I today. saw company on Thursday, by the way. What would you think? I'm not so impressed. Really, not oh, so impressed. Oh, because? I thought, the, I, I think the book still stinks. Mm. The book of company really is horrible. They have to get someone to rewrite that book. I thought that the, um, it didn't gain anything by having the actors play the, 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 uh, their own instruments. The instruments. I liked the positioning. I, I kind of liked the direction, but I didn't think that, I, I thought there were very few standouts. I thought that, um, Oh my gosh, you didn't like Raul Esparza oh, as Batman? Loved, oh, loved okay. Raul Esparza, because okay. he was, he was terrific. So was, um, I like April. Uh, but did, did you like Barbara Walsh as Joanne? Love Barbara Walsh as Joanne. So if, if those two roles are terrific. Yeah, but it's just, but the play drags on and on. And, and that April, the, oh wait, yeah, April is the flight attendant. Yeah, I liked yeah, her very much. Her. Yeah, sure, so, I thought she was great. So what, what did you like? Like, you disliked one or two numbers or some I of just the didn't script? like the, the script at all. It was like, you know, I, I just thought they could cut a little bit or hmm. improve on it. I, I mean, that's, I just wish it's such a great show. Well, it's a great score. And also the fact that, the set didn't help it any. That's a point. I mean, it could have been a little more, you know, these glass cubes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it could have been more of a city, like In the Heights. And they done it in the, in the Heights set. It might have been really cool. But it didn't, you know, they didn't add. There was It's such a bad book, and now to, now to make it sight unspecific. Yeah. But, you know, you'll have another chance to weigh in on it in, in a while, because just the, the day before the last performance, Company was taped for great performances, so it's going to be shown on PBS TV sometime this coming season. So you'll right. have another look at I it. I think I'll miss that one. That's some good news. And finally, Walmartopia will be back. Yes. The Off Broadway show actually it was off off. It was a hit of the. It, it was in the Fringe Festival. Right. Last year's uh, New York International Fringe Festival got some good reviews and then it got a lot of press. So they're bringing it to a commercial run at the Manetta Lane Theater. And it's going to start on Labor Day, September 3rd. And, um, well, the story of it, are you familiar? No, I'm not. It, but it's all about the single mom who's raising a kid and is working at Walmart and starts to, you know, be a little complainy and, and wondering about just what she's getting for the amount of time and effort she's putting in. And then they bring her to the year 2036, when Walmart owns and operates everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it becomes Walmart World, Walmartopia, and that's a, it's a musical satire on that. So I'm looking I forward love to that. It. Yeah. Did you see it at the French No, Festival? I did not. Oh, so, I'm dying to see this now. Opening Labor Day. At the, at the Minetta Lane, right? At the Minetta Lane. Also, we didn't mention what else is closing today. Radio Golf. Right. Right. New August Wilson play. Good play. Um, not the very best of his canon, but, but certainly in the upper middle. So it's a good piece. I saw it twice, one side of town and when he also came to Broadway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, what I've said about Wilson's plays, that whole ten-play canon is, Coast of Utopia might have won the Tony Award this year for best play, and some other things might have beaten him, but his plays are going to be the ones studied in colleges over the next 40, 50 years. Oh, yeah. His will be, I mean, they're just, they're all really, not all are masterworks, but they're all the works But it's amazing also how he intertwined all ten plays. I oh, mean, yes. even Fences, which was kind of the least of the intertwined. Fences, Fences was the neighbor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, right. But just, just so, you know, again, sorry that the play had to close because plays don't run that's, so long on Broadway. That big today. red door had to be plowed under sooner or later. Yeah. But anyway, hope you got to see it. Hope you got to see Company, or you'll, you'll get to see it on PBS. And... Well, should you go see an off-Broadway play called In a Dark, Dark House? I'll let you know right after this message. Let's start at the very beginning. Whether you're at the very beginning, the middle, or the end of the Broadway season, everything you need to know about Broadway, off-Broadway, cabaret, opera, and dance is in the pages of Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine. Available 21 times a year or just in the monthly edition. Either way, Dave's Gone By listeners get 10% off. So subscribe now to Performing Arts Insider and find out all the information at PerformingArtsInsider.com. Yes, 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 PerformingArtsInsider.com, the place to find out everything you need to know about Broadway and off 
Broadway, which is where we're going now, to see In a Dark, Dark House, which is playing at the Lucille Lortel Theater on Christopher Street in the West Village. The uh, <laughs> the playwright is Neil Labute. Who, oh. Yeah, well, uh, now, you, now you know what play I'm talking about, yeah. or the guy I'm talking about. Tell, tell people about Neil Labute. No, I don't. Well, you tell him, because I can't give him a, a, his biography off the top of my head. Sure. Well, he is probably best known for writing uh, the films in the company of men and Nurse Betty. I think he directed them, too. And his plays include Fat Pig and The Shape of Things. Although he's, he's kind of gone a little afield and tried other things, he's really kind of best known for taking characters who should be likable, but they do such awful, nasty things, and their, their human nature is so twisted in a weird way that you just come out of the plays like not liking people very much at all. <laughs> and uh, Does he put them all together in that dark, dark play? <laughs> in this, this show he does. There's only three people in the play. Um, and it's, it's really about this rich guy who's in a hospital, more like a sanitarium, because he's gotten drunk with his mistress and he's crashed the car. So his older brother, who's not rich and is kind of resentful, comes to see him, and the uh, rich brother asks him to vouch for him and tell the doctors the apparently true story that he was molested when he was a kid by some local guy who was running, who was like a coach or something, and the doctors will go easy on him and let him go because there's all this, this backstory involving it. And this, this takes the older brother back to when he was molested by the same guy mm. and had, it was, it was, but it turns out it was more almost of a mutual-ish relationship. Oh, the older brother liked it, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're led to believe, that, that this molesting guy was something of a father figure and a lover, but the older brother is so... Sylvia Flover. So, so horrified that he's also been touching the younger brother, brother way back then, that he tries to go for revenge slash closure, tries to find the guy, and instead finds his 16-year-old daughter. So Ooh. there's a scene in the middle there. Could have a little closure there, huh? Yeah, well, he tries to get some, we, but we don't know if it's going to be really nasty or just a little nasty like Dateline M MSNBC. <laughs> kind of nasty. Did Stone Phillips come out and go... That's Tom Phil. Yeah, He's the guy who comes that, in. You know, the white-haired guy. You know, everybody at home knows who we're talking about. I'm so so from Daylight NBC. Exactly. What do you think of yourself yeah. now? Yeah. Put on so, your clothes. So that's basically the story. And then in the third scene, it's a one, one act, long one act play with three scenes in it. The brothers get back together and then they hash out all this backstory between them and what really happened with the molesting guy and what really happened with the abusive father and all that stuff. And it just felt, for the most part, really constructed, really prefabricated, and kind right. of fake. The set looks mm. sort of fake-ish, and, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where the, there's a projection screen behind them, and when they move to the left or the right, they're past it. <laughs> so, so you're sort of watching the actor outside the set already. It's a weird thing. They could have done a little bit better with that. So, so basically, and then the guy from Dateline NBC goes, good, good play, bad play. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a very good play, although the middle scene kind of works. And that's, that's the scene between Frederick Weller, who plays the, uh, the older brother, although he's... And he's an excellent actor. He's an excellent actor, but here... Are you familiar with the, um, the sketch from Saturday Night Live that Billy Crystal and Christopher Guest used to do, where it would be Willie and Frankie, Oh, I hate when that happens. They would do horrible oh, things yes, to each other, yes, yes, or to yes. themselves. Do you, yeah. do you ever take a ball-peen hammer and hit yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. times in the eye? <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah. He sounded like the Christopher Guest character. Oh, Willie, you know, that's a bad thing. <laughs> and I couldn't get that out of my head. It, it just sounded uh -huh. weird. So that drove even further distance from the play to me. But he does have a pretty good scene with the girl, who's, who's very kind of, um, you know, young and sweet and all those Who played things. the girl, do you know? Louisa Krauss. Very, very Kirsten Dunstian, or Chris, Kristen, Kristen Dunst. Dunst, yeah. And, and it's an interesting scene, and, and that one kind of at least draws you in, where the other two scenes are just going, oh, what else are they going to really, do? Really, you don't care about the each other. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm afraid, in a dark, dark house, gets a thumb, thumb down from <laughs> me. And it, it's going to a dark, dark place that we don't, don't want to go to. Oh. Speaking of dark, dark places that we don't really want to go to, but kind of have to, after we get back from... Uh, this commercial, we're going to say goodbye to a fellow comrade in arms, a theater critic, and, and for most of his time, a movie critic, 
whom we lost this past week, Joel Siegel. But uh, let's get him out of Inside Broadway, and we'll get back to that in just a moment. We've just been Inside Broadway, thanks to TotalTheater.com and Performing Arts Insider. What's black and white and red all over? Photocopies made at Hewlett Minuteman Press, the copy kings of Broadway. Any job that you have, including black and white copies, and they've got a brand new color copier, great quality, good prices, wonderful family that has owned Hewlett Minuteman Press since the 1970s. So check them out, 516-569-5577, Hewlett Minuteman Press. They're the kings. They are the kings. I am so excited. A brand new color copier? <laughs> Be still my heart. I know. I know. Isn't that exciting? I, I wish I would get a new binding machine, though. That, that one broke. No, I'm, really... I'm dying to go make color copies now. Because I can go to Loman's next door and make it for the sale. That's right. You, what you can do is buy one pair of pants and then copy it over and over and have ten pairs of pants. That's uh, perfect. Anywho, I'm here. I'm Dave Lefkowitz. I'm with Jeff Goodman, and uh, hopefully also we're going to have uh, Joe Salzone, an old friend of the program and of this radio station, calling in in about five minutes or so. But first, I do want to do some goodbye stuff to, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, what it is. We lost a comrade in arms this past week, Joel Siegel. The yeah. uh, entertainment critic for ABC for, since, what was it, 1976, he had been with, I guess, Good Morning America. And well, there is things. one good thing that comes out of it. What could that Job be? opening. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? They won't fail. Well, no, they'll need a movie critic. Yeah. He started as a theater critic, or, or I guess all over entertainment yes, thing. Yes. And you, you can tell the story of why. Well, the, the story is that he didn't want to cover theater because he said, if I give a show a bad review... The show will close, and then all sorts of people are out of work, and he didn't want to hurt people, so he figured if he just did movies, if he gives the movie a bad review, then no, they've already they've had all the production, no one's out of work, really. Right, the film's been done. I mean, it might hurt the chances for the director a little bit, but it, it's, all the work is done, so good good point. I, I don't agree with him, necessarily. Yeah, I'm not, you know... But at least that was his nature, and that this woman seemed to be a really nice guy. He did seem to be a good guy. And, and um, he lived with cancer for a long... It was colon cancer colon is cancer. what got him towards the end. He lived for about 10 years battling it and, and dealing with it. Um, he, In fact, before he got the cancer, this is kind of odd, he helped co-found Gilda's Club with mm -hmm. um, Gene Wilder. That, that, of course, when Gilda Radner died, Wilder founded this, yes. this thing for um, people with cancer. So he was part of founding that, which is kind of nice. And didn't he write, who, who wrote the first? He was a Tony nominee for yeah. co-writing... The Broadway musical, it didn't. It wasn't a hit, but... He and he did. obviously didn't review it. <laughs> <laughs> he also had an off-Broadway uh, hit review a few years before that, like, what's a nice country like you doing in a state like this? Oh, that was his? That was, that was co-his, something. Co-his. And so, he was, a, he was a good guy. My favorite, my Joel Siegel story, the thing I remember him most about was not him doing an actual review. But do you remember Death Trap? Yes. The movie, the movie Death Trap. Yes. Remember the scene where he's Sidney Brule, who is the the playwright who's mm -hmm. having a hit. He's like the Max Bialy stock of thrillers. Right. So they're waiting to see whether his his show's going to be a hit or not. So they turn on. This is back in the old days when ABC, CBS, NBC had theater yeah. critics. Right. And before they could read the New York Times at the cast parties and things, they were, they would put on the TV at 11 because the times didn't come out until 2, right. 3 in the morning. So they put on the TV and see what the local critics said to get a more of a flavor mm -hmm. of what the public would say. And in the movie of Death Trap, they go to Joel Siegel and he says, well, the latest Sidney Brule who done it opened. And the question here is not who done it. We know who done it. Sidney Brule done it. And what's worse, he done it in public. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's such a typical... Joel Siegel-y kind, of, yes. kind of lying, you know. He wouldn't necessarily pull his punches, but he didn't dumb things down for, for TV, but he made it right for TV. He was, he was good at what he did. Less sticky than, say, Gene Shalit, but um, he, was just, he just seemed like and a what good did guy. He, remember the, the review Upstairs No Neils? Remember yeah. they, they had all the, um, the mothers of the critics? 
And everyone, all the mothers had the mustaches. <laughs> because, don't you remember that? I don't remember. I didn't oh, see that. Oh, it was wonderful. Oh, well. They used to spoof him like crazy all the time. Well, him and, I guess, Gene Shallot even more. Yeah, Joel Siegel, Gene Shallot, and there was another one with a... Well, uh, P. Lindstrom. She, she, yeah, she had a lovely mustache. A lot of depilatory going on there. Anyway, um, we're going to miss him. going to miss Joel Siegel in and out of the neighborhood. And Jeff and I will be back, though, in the neighborhood. And hopefully, I think that's Joe Salzone on the phone. So we will get to him in I just think he hung up. Well, yeah, it only rings for so many times. So he's calling right back. Oh, he's back. He's back. He'll, and we'll be back right after this. Well, rock a my mortgage in the bosom of Abraham. Rock a my mortgage in the bosom of Abraham. Rock a my mortgage in the bosom of Abraham. Mortgagesrock.com. God has a plan for you giving your friends and family mortgage loans. Learn how at mortgagesrock.com. Fully licensed in New York State and in heaven. They'll teach you the ropes so you can climb Jacob's Ladder to high, high, high commissions. Rock a my mortgage, mortgagesrock.com. Rock a my mortgage, mortgagesrock.com. Rock a my mortgage, mortgagesrock.com. Everybody point and click. Sponsor me, Dave's gone by, run your ad, folks will buy. If you want to reach the public, sponsor me. Advertise on this program for incredibly reasonable rates with long-term discounts. See prices at davesgoneby.org or call 516-295-1511. Sponsor me, if you're wise, on Dave's Gone By, you'll advertise. If you want to be successful, sponsor me. Welcome back to Dave's Gone By. That was a pitiful plea, by the way. No, it wasn't pitiful at all. It was, it was very Wild Man Fisher-esque. I, well, that would be pitiful, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hey, speaking of pitiful, our, our guest on the telephone at the moment, I was so happy to see him. He stopped in earlier, brought me coffee, and we chatted over old times. I haven't seen Joe Salzone in months and months and months, and so it was really, really great to see him. He looks good, but I was wondering why he was wearing... Long sleeves and long pants in this kind of weather, because usually when I see Joe, he's he's dark naked. So, really? Yeah, absolutely. So I was like, Joe, why are you dressed like this? And uh, now I've got Joe Salzone on the phone saying hi. Joe, what's the matter? Dave, you nappy-headed hoe, you didn't reimburse me for that coffee. No, you know, I, I didn't. I, I generally don't, because uh, I'm the older guy, and you should yeah, be and, the and, and, and you're Jewish, we know. We know. <laughs> and he got no money. <laughs> oh, that we, we certainly know. But Joe, well, how you... That's because people have to sponsor him. <laughs> <laughs> he has to pitifully plead for sponsorship. Ah, uh, yes, those poor suckers. Well, anyway, I, what? I don't know what that means. What does that mean, Joe? You know, hey, it's almost midnight, I don't know. It means that anyone who sponsors you would be very lucky to do so. Exactly. And it is past Joe's bedtime. Usually he's asleep by like nine, ten o'clock because... Why is that, Joe? It's because I have a real job, Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a real radio job. <laughs> Where can people hear you? I have no idea. Oh, now stop. On the radio, said. maybe? On the radio, perhaps. You know, in the perfect world, on the radio, yes. Well, uh, yeah. And what radio station do you work at? I, I'm afraid that is between me and the CIA. Oh. Yeah, and, and also the other station that doesn't like him, people knowing that he's on this station. Yeah, that's so it's kind of a... Yeah. Oh, I see. But you're you're on it most mornings giving the news broadcasts on this other station. So most mornings. Uh, now I was listening to you two uh, talk. Is it about a Long Island uh, radio station? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, I believe it is. Okay. Uh, Joel Siegel, who yeah. died this week, wrote a book uh, after the birth of his son. Yeah. Joel was 57 when his son was born about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and and he wrote this book. Yeah. This was after his cancer diagnosis, and he wasn't sure how much time he'd have. The doctor said at the time, uh, after the original diagnosis, that he, Joel, would have about a 70% chance of seeing his son born. That uh, that percentage would, would later drop uh, following some surgeries. But he wrote this book, a collection of letters to his son, Dylan. Mm-hmm. And one, he, he talks about uh, going through chemotherapy. Uh, so he, going and, through what? Right, and losing his hair. Oh, chemotherapy and, and losing his hair, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, it's, you know, those evil cell phones. I know. And uh, I, I... Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? now? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I was, they, uh, they published on the ABC website uh, parts of his book. Mm-hmm. And, and much like his uh, critiques of movies, you can almost hear him 
telling you the story. It was very well written and, and uh, sad that he passed away. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I didn't read the book. I'm not about to now, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it was... Why? Give it that sad notes. Yeah, listen, I'm going to read it to everyone. <laughs> it's in large type. <laughs> but speaking of ailments, thank God... Well, not... why are you in long sleeve and long pants? That's uh, what I want to know, Joe. Well, I, I unfortunately uh, lost a recent wrestling match with Poison Ivy. You lost what? A recent... I lost, I lost a wrestling match with Poison Ivy. Oh. Uh, I am currently, though, winning the battle... Um, with calamine lotion? Calamine lotion and uh, assorted other lotions. Uh, and, and you just don't... KY, um, boy bugger. No. They, no. they gave me a very nice rub down earlier. That oh, was yeah. very nice. I didn't even ask. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I told him no. But... Was there a happy ending to it? <laughs> well, for me anyway. Yeah, but anyway. And yes. <laughs> for his wife, not so much. <laughs> that was awkward. But you dis declined to see a doctor. I mean, you've had this for a few days now. And even in its worst, when you weren't able to sleep, you said no doctors. No, that doc that's highway robbery, going to a doctor. So were you itchy? I am itchy. And scratchy? No, I'm not scratchy. Because of the calamine? Yep. Did you take a milk bath, too? Oh, that's skunk. Or oatmeal or something. Oh, yeah. No, uh, no. I, I thought about doing the oatmeal bath, but as I told Dave earlier, there, I just don't want oatmeal in every nook and cranny of my body. It's just wrong. It's very healthy for you. It's low cholesterol. That's right. Well, well, Jeff, if I remember you, I'm sure you would enjoy that. I don't uh, even know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know either. Now, is he the one who uh, spoke of his trip to Thailand? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, that's what he means. Okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> we won't get into that. Okay. Uh, those stories are burned in my memory. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, those stories. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of uh, 16 year olds, but anywho. No, I don't know what 16 year olds? <laughs> no, anywho. So, how else have things been for you, Joe? Well, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I understand, uh, Dave. Yes. That your wife has now finally become a doctor. This is true. And the divorce uh, is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> May I offer you the greatest of mazel tovs at that achievement? Yeah. I mean, and, and we also have to add that she's moving to Philadelphia. Well, part time. Yes, here, here and there. I mean, we're she's finally escaped the neighborhood. <laughs> That's right. She'll have a, she'll have a part time husband uh, over there. Over and, there, and yeah. Well, we hope so. <laughs> it's better than no husband all over here. She's looking for a personal trainer out there, so... <laughs> Someone named Lars who's skating. You know, I'm, I'm free in the afternoon, so hey. Hey, you have poison ivy. I don't want to rub it up against you. Besides, you're his. <laughs> oh, that's that's true. And I would miss you terribly, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you would. So how are your dachshunds? Joe is also a dachshund person. He's got two, as everyone uh, should. They are good. Um... Are we, uh, they spayed and neutered? Are you spayed and neutered? Uh, I am not. Oh, uh, you, no, actually, before we get to the dogs, you did tell me, and I hope this was not off the record, that when you got poison ivy, you got it everywhere. Yes. Including... It, it, it was off the record. Oh. Uh, but you can use your imagination as to... So, are your dogs spayed and neutered? <laughs> uh, yes, they are. Now, you might want to know why I asked that question. Why did you ask that question, Jeff? I'm a personal friend of Bob Barker's. Did I tell you I was on the prices, right? <laughs> Dave just hates when I bring that up every time. Well, I haven't heard the story. Be so because, I'm... you see, I bring it up every opportunity I can. And actually, Dave, the really, really good news about that... What's the really good news? Is though? I found out while we were in Vegas mm -hmm. that I'm going to be rerun on The Price is Right. <laughs> August 10th, and a Friday rerun, which means my episode was a great favorite of the CBS executives. Mazel tov. But, now I know you'll be announcing this every yes, Sunday until... Yes, from now until August 10th. Ah. So do set your calendar for o Friday, August 10th at 11 a.m. Channel 2. Where the price is... You, you watch it every day, don't you, Joe? <coughs> I haven't watched The Price is Right in years. Well, what are you going to do on August 10th? I will I will watch The Great Jeff Goodman on The Price is Right. I, I, and thank you. And I, you know what I'm wondering, though? What are you wondering, I, though? Are they going to send me duplicate prizes now? Do I win <laughs> the prizes again? <laughs> now, that would be good. I mean, that would be neat. I don't think so, though. I want you get residuals. You know what I want? What? A new car! Yeah! <laughs> Joe feels completely left out of this conversation now. You there, Joe? I'm, I'm here. No, you were actually on contestants, row. I was called on down. 
Really? Oh no! Oh no! On TV, you heard oh, um, oh, there we go, oh, Jeffrey Goodman. Come on down. Well, now see now, I I I, I must ask you. Yes. Did you know ahead of time that you'd be called down, or or is it literally a surprise? No, it is really truly a surprise. You really? you have like a sixty, not even a sixty second interview. They they interview everybody in the audience. All three hundred and twenty five people get interviewed by one of the associate producers, uh, and then if they like you, that that's how they gauge your personality, and they just call you on down if they like you. So they do have a list of people potential contestants. No, no, they don't know who, they honestly do not know who is coming down. Really? So it's, 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 so it's, it's an arbitrary decision. It, 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 it's a, what happens is you go and you have a number on you, which, which most people don't know. Underneath your name you, tag. You there's actually a, tattoo it on your arm. There's, there's a number. <laughs> and, and you're always in line by the number. And the number is also so they know where you're seated. So that they kind of know. They haven't, they pick the order of who's going to, I'm assuming they pick the people before. There's a list given to the announcer before the show, but up until maybe an hour or two before the show, they have no idea who's going to be a contestant. <laughs> He's actually a really, really nice man. He's um, very calming. When, you, when, you're, when you're on the show, you, you actually aren't nervous because he's by your side all the time, and he kind of says things in a very calming way. Not that you know what anything is doing. Everyone talks about the Price is Right fog. You're not nervous. You're just in this fog when you're on it. And, and Bob says, calm down, you moron. <laughs> it works. <laughs> no, but he, there, there's like ten people behind the cameras, there, four, three cameras at you or something like that. and then Oh, yeah, no, I can imagine. All these cameras, completely. and there's a stage manager and a director. They're all moving their hands, telling you where to go. It's like, really, you're just watching everything going on around you. Did it, he it's, talk to the audience during commercial breaks? Oh, yes. He does? Bob oh, does? yeah, oh. Bob. He takes questions. He's very nice. Oh, you had said that. in. You wouldn't know it in real life, but, but when the cameras are on and when he steps out on that stage, you say he's the funniest. Well, even when he's on, when he's on stage and you, at home, you hear and it's like all corny jokes and stuff that he does. They're hilarious in person. He's like one of the funniest people, and he's, and he's very nice. He's very genteel. Hmm. Um, a really nice man. There's nothing I can say bad about uh, Roger Dobkowitz is one of my favorite people. He's the executive producer of The Price is Right. He couldn't be nicer. Um, and the only people who are kind of standoffish are the models. They're really, they, uh, they don't, they just come, in, they, you hardly see them. Hmm. Now, well, yeah, because they're so thin, you can't really see them. This is true. Uh -huh. yeah. Let me ask, um... Except, yeah. except when I did, I, I also did some test shows for, uh, the new, the new Bob Barker, you know, finding a replacement for Bob Barker. And I, in one of the test shows, I did win a showcase, which garnered me quite a bit of money, which was excellent. Because you don't get prizes, you just win money. In the showcase. Thing, it, so. No, in the uh, test show. Test show, showcase. But, the, um... but in the test shows, what they did is I won the showcase, and I ran over to, I had won a trip and a, 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 a trip to the Bahamas and a, an ugly living room set. and Or an ugly, ugly bedroom set, that was it. It was like wicker and ugh, ick. It was horrible. But... Um, so I went, and the models call you over to them, and they were at the trip. And, of course, one of the models then did, did, said, why don't we move over this way? And did one of those, the fabulous Price is Right hand flips to me. Ooh. Why don't we go this way? And I said, okay, baby, let's go to the bed. <laughs> That's the first time you ever, I don't even want to go there. That's the first time a female model has told me to, let's go to hop into bed. Yeah. But I don't think she really was telling me to hop into bed with her. Now, now that Bob Barker is no longer doing the show, can you be on it again? No, I cannot. Even so, even only in reruns. Huh. Okay. So you so. will then live on in TV game show lore. Perhaps. Oh yes. Oh well. Wait, wait till you see the show, because I I really am in history of the prices. <laughs> it's right. something to see. But we we've got to get kind of scooting and getting out of here. But uh, Jeff. Uh, Joe, I should say. Joe, it's, it's wonderful to hear from you. And when are you coming in for a live uh, yeah. interview? Yeah. You know, I would love to. I really would. I, I, I truly, in all in all honesty to you, Dave, I truly do miss seeing you on a regular basis. Aw. Uh, and I, I missed all Trust of the... Trust me, you're not uh, missing much. <laughs> <laughs> clearly not. Uh, all the drunken humor that goes along with Dave's run by. <laughs> what many don't know is that when, when Dave is on the air, he's actually half drunk. Oh, only half? I don't have clothes. They've you, calibrated you, you, my uh, my levels. It's like you've, point... me you've mellowed out over the years, I must admit. It's all the O'Doul's I've been drinking. It's like 0.5% alcohol in the O'Doul's. You're not allowed to say something unless they sponsor you. 
O whoops, it's O blank. <laughs> you Some must Irish the Budweiser group. Corporation. Tell them for a case of O'Jules, they can sponsor you. I like the idea. Well, speaking of sponsors, let's. Uh, by the way, thanks, Joe. Have a great night. Hope Take to see and you live soon. Enjoy your morning radio news hood on oh, W whatever. Blum Blum Blum. Yeah. Long I will next week. Yes. Yeah. Next uh, week, you took the week off because you're scratching. Yeah. Yeah. Feel better, man. No, I saw in? his arms. They're Who's filling tonight. in for you? Absolutely no one. There's no news. It's amazing. Well, then Dave and I should fill in for you. <laughs> Did you, you yeah. know, wrong religion. <laughs> oh, why? Is it a Catholic radio station? A little broader. Yeah, a little, a little slightly more extreme than that. More extreme? Yeah. What is it? I'm dying now. It's a Nazi radio station. Is it really? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, a religious station. It's, a, it's religious yeah. music. It's a religious and we can't program. fill in? Well, I would feel weird. Would you feel comfortable filling in? Yeah. It's the news, the Pope news. <laughs> uh, you make their comfort coming So it would be the Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, we've got to wrap up because speaking of Christians, we do have gospel radio coming in uh, and, they're, and they're here now. So we've got to finish things up. Joe, have a great night. Thank you. Bye, Joe. Bye-bye. Thanks again to our sponsors, Fancy Schmancy Balloons, which Jeff runs. What's the phone number for people who want... Uh, that would be 516-797-3229. Well, 516 yeah. 7973229 and also thanks to Performing Arts Insider Theater the Magazine. The Bible of Broadway. That's right. I told everybody at the beginning of the show, usually Dave's Gone By listeners get 10% off. We're giving a really, really great special. It's under $200 for the season now for Dave's Gone By That's listeners. That's 11% off, Dave. No, it's, it's more than that. The, the annual subscription price for 21 issues a year is $275. That's outrageous. If you're a list, well, then get it while it's under 200 because you can now, if you're a Dave's Gone By listener, go to davesgoneby.org. And when does that sale end? Uh, end of the month. End of July, I should say. <laughs> it's a limited time only. Limited time only. And also go to mortgagesrock.com for everything you need to know about mortgages, not only getting them for yourself, but getting loans. Scamming your friends, friends, making them mortgage. I'm going to turn off your... You cannot say all these bad things about our sponsors. What's the matter with no, you? No, I like mortgage. I told you. I, I always tell you. I yeah, like, but you, no, you won't, you've got to tell I'm us sorry. every single show. Okay, well, I like mortgagesrock.com uh, because I've actually gone on the site, and it's an excellent, excellent site, and you can get a great mortgage for yourself, your friends, your family, and that's you can better. make some money doing some a nice thing for your family, friends and family. Absolutely right. That's, that's, that's kind of what I call scamming, but, you know, so it's not really scamming. It's, it's a not fun scamming, scamming at all. Yeah, it's a, and say something nice about you, Lit Minuteman Press. They are next to Loman. <laughs> what, <laughs> else, what else can you say? It's Loman. And the new color copy, I oh, am yeah, spelling. 569-5577, area code 516 for Hewlett Minuteman Press. And if you're in Lomans, yeah. you must stop by next door and say, Dave said I could have a free color copy. And they'll tell you, no, they're wrong. Well, they'll give you 10% off a color copy. So how much is the color copy? I don't know. I honestly don't Next know. week, can we tell people how much color copies are on the brand new color copier? If I remember. It's fabulous they have a color copy. Okay. Let's do some shout-outs and, and um, some other things. Joyce! Before. Joyce, save me! Not to thank you. Well, huh? I don't know. I was, I shouting, know. I was out. shouting out to my wife, Joyce. My and can I shout out to your aunt? My Aunt Esther, of course. Let's give her a... Hi, Aunt Esther. How was your flight home? Didn't go first class, did you? Uh, she thanks um, Jeff very much because he gave her... like I upgraded Esther. ...flyer miles to, to let her do that. Now, we also want to thank so much Jill Sobuel. Catch her July 7th and July 8th at Joe's Pub on Lafayette Street. Joe's Pub. Next to the public theater. Yeah, or part, literally yeah. Kind of part of the public theater. She's been there a few times, and she, I've seen her there. Because you know whose pub it really is. What, sir? Joe Papps. Well, when he, yeah. They named it after him. He wasn't yeah. around when, when they even created the, the space, I don't think. So anyway, she's going to be there July 7th, July 8th, Joe's Pub. Absolutely highly recommended. I've seen her in concert. She's marvelous. Jill Sobule, and thank her for, for tolerating the rabbi and being in the neighborhood. Also want to remind people, Christine Petty is at the Metropolitan Room once more tomorrow night, July 2nd. Go see her. Because she's out of a job on Broadway. Well, yeah, talk radio just ended. Yes. But she's, hey, she's still on um, satellite radio. She's still doing a bunch of stuff, and she's doing a one-woman show at the Metropolitan Room. Speaking okay, we won't cry for Christine Petty. That's right. Speaking of the Metropolitan Room, upcoming guest, Julie Wilson, she's going to be on this show in two weeks. She's there July 12th through July 20th at the Metropolitan Room. A cabaret legend, Julie Wilson. Also an upcoming guest on this show, Carrie Hoffman. 
He's doing a show called My Sinatra, The Songs and the Stories, and uh, he's going to be doing that July 10th, Tuesday, at the Metropolitan Room. And mm. Terry Hoffman is the owner and operator, and has been since its beginnings of stand-up New York comedy club. So lots really? Of yeah. Oh. Lots of cool stuff to ask him about. And a couple of reminders, as always, watch for Jeff and me and Charles Gross in episodes of Two on the Isle that you can see on YouTube. Just put Two on the Isle in the YouTube Ooh. search bar. And then some, some kind of bad news. Last chance to hear vintage episodes of Dave's Gone By Saturday night at 11. Two episodes on, on uh, DFSX Radio. On what happened to DFSX? DFSX? Oh, you, so many internet radio stations are getting killed by that uh, new agreement about the copyright laws that, that the, um, the prices... Of the prices weren't right. The prices are totally not right. They tripled. What so, happened? Well, the, the Congress approved it. it they, they said they can triple these copyright laws for things that are streaming on the Internet. And bunches and bunches of radio stations. and, and So DFS at, Radio is going off the air? Going off the air. Live365.com may not be long for this world. <gasps> no! So it really, really sucks. So your last chance to hear two episodes of Dave's Gone By will be on July Seven. What episodes will they be? I don't know. You'll have to go to... Will um, I be on them? I don't know. They're probably older episodes, so they, they, they wouldn't be. And finally, you, you can still, for a long time, assumedly, hear 25 vintage episodes of Dave's Gone By at theaterpod.com. That's theater with an E-R. Theaterpod.com. 25 episodes. They're free. You can hear them anytime, 24-7. Just go to that Theaterpod.com. Well, we're not going anywhere. We will be back next Sunday, July 8th, 2007, with the 229th episode of Dave's Gone By. Until then, don't miss your days going by. This is Dave Lefkowitz. And Jeff Goodman. Wishing you good night, happy 4th of July, and gone by. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> I wish I had somebody to rock me to sleep Some won't be melting with snowy white sheets Wish I had somebody to rock me to sleep Rock me to sleep, rock me to sleep I wish I had somebody to rock me to sleep Shadows of the sycamore tree Wave and keep me company Keep me company, company Long dark cans of the sycamore tree Take me in your arms Close my eyes Till the street lamp die And the traffic rumble Somebody